How much does an architectural photographer make? Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rick and in this week's video, which is the blog post written on ringmacavoyphotography.com, I will answer the question, how much does an architectural photographer make? And here is the answer first. Well, if you're considering starting a career in architectural photography, and why shouldn't you? This is a great question. How much an architectural photographer can make depends on a number of factors. Experience, brand, portfolio, qualifications, the economy, obviously, markets, clients, types of work, quantity of work, number of images, editing, full-time or part-time, other related sectors, commercial deals, competition, other income streams, online presence, social media presence. That's my list. Okay, don't worry, I won't be, I'll be brief. I won't be brief? That wasn't very helpful, was it? Right, first the bad news. I can't give you a number. I can't say an architectural photographer earns X pounds, dollars, or what have you. Now, there's so many variables, and if somebody has written an article that says an architectural photographer earns X, then I would suggest you might want to question the value of that number because it depends on so many things, which, I'm, which I go through in this post and in this video. Um, the other reason I can't tell you is that I will be compromising my commercial deals with clients and compromising any future negotiations. So this is probably the only thing that I'm not going to tell you. I've told you everything else that I know about architectural photography, construction photography, and let's not forget photography in general on the Photography Explained podcast. Check it out. It's really good. Just recorded another episode, which I'm excited to release shortly. Right then, so, your own number, this is the one thing that you have to do, is um, work out how much you need to earn. And how much you need to earn determines how many shoots you need to do at a certain price. And that's how it works in photography. So, um, yeah, it's not easy, let's be honest with you. So, you need your own number. Right, let's go into a few of these points. I'm not going to go through all the points, because there are far too many. Check out the blog post if you want to read it in full, which I hope you do. Experience. You have to be able to prove that you have experience as an architectural photographer. Makes sense, doesn't it? Um, if you phoned me up and said, will you come and photograph my wedding? I would say no, I have no experience as a wedding photographer. I have no aspirations to be a wedding photographer. I photograph buildings. I am an architectural photographer. How are you meant to know that? As you're looking at my website, well, when you look at my website, there's no weddings on there. There's no photos of people apart from people in hard hats talking in earnest on construction sites. Everything says architectural photography, construction photography. The message is clear. So my experience is there for all to see. And as ever, the phone rings, they've gone. I love it when phone calls come up on the iPad and I like doing the Dom Jolly thing. Hello! Um, Sorry. Brand. Yes, experience and you need a brand and a reputation. Go to my website. And in fact, somebody once said, they went to my website, they asked me, they wanted me to photograph some paintings for them. It didn't come about because there was a technical problem, not one that I'm equipped to deal with. But the guy who phoned me up said, yeah, your website is shouting out, I don't photograph weddings. Which is good, that's my intention. Nothing against weddings and wedding photographers, it's just not what I do. So you need to brand yourself. You need to be that person who does that thing. I've been banging on about this now for weeks and weeks and weeks. Find your one thing and do that one thing, but do it well. I do architectural photography and buildings in nice places on holiday. I have some rides, but don't tell anyone. Right, let's move on. Portfolio. Yeah, if you're going to get work as an architectural photographer and charge a good amount for it, you need a good portfolio. The better the portfolio, the higher the standard of the work, in theory, the more you can charge. And that's what this is all about, isn't it? Being able to charge as much, when I say as much as possible, let me put that another way, as much as is reasonably expected for the standard of work that you do. If you're the best photographer in the world, you expect to be paid more than the worst photographer in the world. It's not unusual, not unreasonable, is it? Qualifications. Now, if you think about this, 
if you're going to appoint an architect, you would pay, for argument's sake, an hourly rate for a junior architect, uncharted, and a senior architect, qualified, associate, director, the rate goes up with the level of qualification and experience and status. So I'm a professional photographer, I'm an associate of the British Institute of Professional Photography, not a licentiate, but I'm not a fellow yet, but hey, it's only a matter of time, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, um, so you need a portfolio, you need to be qualified, you need to demonstrate that this is what you do. A client needs to look at your website, because that's what it's all about these days, isn't it, websites, and go, yeah, I, this guy can do, or girl, sorry, this guy, this girl, this person can do what I need them to do. I'm happy that they've got the technical and professional capabilities. Okay, other things. The economy, well, yeah, it's not a great time at the moment, is it, with things going on around the world, but um, here in the UK, construction is strong, so, um, in fact, it's so strong that there's a little bit less marketing of construction going on because it's um, so busy. People don't feel the need to market at the moment, but there will come a time when, there is, well, I'm hoping the economy won't um, slide into a recession or anything, but when times get harder, then people start to invest more in advertising and promotion. But there's still work out there. There's still plenty of things that can be done and need to be done. Um, markets and clients. Who are you working for? Contractors, architects, developers, product manufacturers, because these people work in different ways commercially. A contractor is going to be price driven. That's just the reality and that's fine and I'm fully aware of that. An architect will be tending more towards the quality side. So not it's certainly price is a factor but not as much as with a contractor. Developers the same, very commercial. Um, cheapest price will tend to win the job. So um, that's why I work more for architects. And, and the other one is, is product manufacturers. The people who make things, they're not as cutthroat. They are more reasonable, shall we say, commercially um, and appreciate paying a little bit more. So it depends. Um, types of work. I'm going to read this one out because I quite like this. If you're photographing... <laughs> I say I read it out and I can't read it out, can I? So I don't know why I bother sometimes. Let's try again. Okay. If you're photographing Buckingham Palace, you will charge more than if you're photographing someone's house. Oh, the irony of that. Buckingham Palace is someone's house. It's just a rather large one. But you know what I mean, don't you? If you're photographing a £50 million development, you'll probably be charging more than you will be for someone photographing a house. Okay. It's a higher, it's a different level of work and it's finding your level that you're happy with and comfortable with and can work in. Right, what else have we got? Quality of work. No, let's not do that. Let's do quantity because this is a very important one. I'm an architectural photographer. Now, how many, what percentage of my time do you think I'm taking photos? Not very much is the answer. A disappointingly small amount. Um, you don't just, when you become an architectural photographer, you don't just turn up every day, shoot a shiny new building, and then drive off again in your lovely car and then the next day do the same thing. Oh no, there is so much more. Such as, I'll read the list here because I'll never remember them. Marketing, agreeing deals, contracts, prepping the gear, planning the shoot, doing the shoot, editing the images. This is a separate post all on its own, but you're not just taking photos, you're doing a lot else. So. 10 to 20 percent is not an unreasonable amount of time a professional photographer in any field spends taking photos okay if that's a shocking number photography might not be for you that's the reality just saying editing time now i work on a fixed fee for each commission each is priced individually and i have an estimate in the amount of time i'm going to take editing photos Thankfully, I'm pretty quick these days in Lightroom with a bit of Photoshop, not too much, just to remove stuff so it doesn't take me too long. If I turn up on a shoot and there's a massive scaffold there, I might not be able to edit it out or it might take me a lot of time. That's an extreme example, I know, but in that case, I would need to be paid more for my editing. 
Okay, what else have we got? Architectural photography. How much can you earn as an architectural photographer? Well, one way of earning more is to broaden out the markets that you work in as an architectural photographer. So just a few things to think about here. Estate agent photography, it's the same thing, isn't it? Different commercial sector. Real estate photography, that's the American term. Uh, construction product photography, which is actually one of my favorite things. It is architectural photography, but you need to just think about things, like all the things that you photographed. Which leads me on to the last point, and then I will leave you to get on with your day, evening, night, whatever it is, wherever you are. Commercial deals, right, this is this is freelancing um, at its best. Well, it's not at its best, is it? This is one of the benefits of freelancing. I work for an architect. I own the copyright. In my conditions of a quote, I am allowing, I am allowed in the contracts I have with the client to sell those photos to somebody else. Just think about that. The architect designed the building. All those components, every product, every contractor, every supplier, every specialist consultant, everybody is a potential customer for the photos that somebody's paid you to do. This is this is the most important point I wanted to make really, apart from the 10 to 20% is all the time you're spending taking photos. You must reserve that right, retain that right to be able to sell your work to others. Okay, so very, very important because you never know when someone's going to get in touch with you and say, have you got a photo of an X and a Y? And if you have, happy days. The work's done. You're repeating your income. So that's freelancing for you. That's one of the aspects of it. Right, I've been speaking for far too long. I need a cup of tea. Thank you for watching. Please check out my website, Rick McAvoy Photography. Dot com my podcast photography explained podcast.com and my youtube channel if you subscribe that'd be nice it's nice to see some more subscribers now i'm back onto the architectural stuff and i will see you on the next video i've been rick mcavoy thanks for watching cheers from me rick